The government has announced that Goldman Sachs has agreed to a 3.9 billion US dollar settlement over the 1MDB scandal, confirming an earlier the HMarkets.com report. This is said to be the biggest settlement for Malaysia and possibly the largest payout by the Wall Street Bank. According to a statement by the Ministry of Finance, the settlement will be split into a cash payment of 2.5 billion US dollars and a guarantee of a full recovery value of at least 1.4 billion US dollars in assets linked to 1MDB bonds. Goldman Sachs will assist Malaysia in recovering other related assets abroad at its own cost as acknowledgement of the misconduct of its two former executives in the 1MDB scandal. In a statement, Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin said that with the latest settlement, the total sum that will be returned to Malaysia is 4.5 billion US dollars, which includes funds previously returned by the US Department of Justice. However, the MOF says that this payment will not affect Malaysia's claim against fugitive Low Tech Joe and other parties related to the now defunct Sovereign Wealth Fund. West Sports Holdings saw its net profit drop 19.2% to 134.34 million ringgit in the second quarter of FY20 from 166.32 million ringgit a year ago as the COVID-19 pandemic affected continued throughput according to its boss filing. Revenue for the quarter stood at 431.6 million ringgit versus 454.45 million ringgit in the second quarter of FY19. It declared its first interim single tier dividend of 5.05 cent per share. For the first half of FY20, net profit declined 6.2% year on year to 287.15 million ringgit from 306.22 million ringgit in the first half of FY19. This was despite an improvement of 4% year on year in revenue from 869.64 million ringgit to 905.07 million ringgit. Meanwhile, in a separate statement, Group MD Datuk Ruben Imen Nana Ligam said global consumption and economic activities for this year are unlikely to resume immediately to pre COVID 19 levels, therefore, impacting its container throughput in the second half of FY20. Westports also said as the land reclamation for its container terminal expansion is expected to commence in 2021, the group will temporarily adopt a dividend payout ratio of 60% to conserve cash. Bank Negara told analysts that the local banks will not be extending the automatic loan moratorium once the scheme expires in September. The focus instead will be on targeted financial assistance in the form of loan restructuring and rescheduling. Loans subject to R&R schemes will not be classified as impaired. Afin Huang investment analyst Tan Yi Lin said in a note that nonetheless, banks remain at risk and that their expected credit losses will remain high in 2020 till 2021. Meanwhile, MIDF Amana Investment Bank analyst Imran Yasin Yusof said BNM has asserted that banks have been resilient amid the COVID-19 pandemic, although a spike in non-performing loans and credit costs is on the horizon, with impairments seen to peak in 2021. The Malaysian Automotive Association has revised its 2020 total industry volume forecast higher from 400,000 units previously to 470,000 units on the back of stimulus measures. This is premised on expectations of higher consumer spending following the government's economic stimulus measures, which include vehicle sales tax exemptions. MAA's pre-COVID-19 sales target for 2020 had been 607,000 units. President Dato Aisha Ahmad says while the new TIV forecast is still 22.2% lower than 2019's TIV of 604,287 units, it is very realistic given current circumstances. For the first half of 2020, MAA says TIV fell 41.1% year-on-year from 296,317 units to 174,675 units but expects the second half to be better. Still, Aisha cautions that the Malaysian auto industry will face more headwinds once the six-month loan moratorium expires in September as consumers will face difficulties in securing higher purchase loans.
Jekyll Trading will be getting back the 10.75 million ringgit that was seized by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission after the agency failed in its bid to stay a High Court order dismissing it to forfeit the money. Counsel Habizan Rahman, who represented Jekyll, told the HMarkets.com that this effectively means the account will be unfrozen and that the money will be returned to the textile wholesale supplier after it was decided that the payment received by Jekyll was a normal business transaction. Adding to that, given Jekyll's annual income of hundreds of millions, it would be able to repay the money if the MACC were to succeed in its appeal. To recap, in June 2019, the MACC filed a civil forfeiture suit against 41 entities to recover about 270 million ringgit allegedly linked to 1MDB and which was illegally transferred from bank accounts belonging to ex-PM Dato Sri Najib Razak.